Hello and welcome to another virtual video tour. Today we're in Sukhothai at the site of Wat Mahathat, which would have been the largest and most important temple uh, in the Sukhothai kingdom. Okay, this temple was likely constructed uh, sometime after the reign of uh, King Yongkumhang, the Great. So maybe in the later uh, Sukhothai period, um, there are some architectural features here, which actually didn't exist until about the time of uh, Li Tai. We'll uh, get closer and talk about those as we uh, enter the temple here. Okay. You can already see, just as we approach, uh, how large the compound is. Alright, well, as we enter the main gate here, uh, you'll see some chedis in the typical Sukhothai, Sri Lankan style. The bell-shaped chedis with the ring at the base of the chedi and the multi-layered finial at the top, complete with a, more of a square base at the bottom. Okay, so here's one of those chedi. Right. Let's go around the other side, maybe we can get a better view. Uh, the sun's going down at the moment. Uh, but you can see this chedi is built from red brick mostly. Okay, well, there's a lot of laterite to be seen around the temple as well. There we go. So you can see right there is the multi layered finial, the uh, bell shaped portion, and then the four sides, or the four sided uh, base of the structure here. Uh, this particular chedi has a laterite base. The main portion is constructed with red brick. Again, the same uh, Sri Lankan influenced architectural style there. And uh, a lot of ruined uh, bases of smaller chedi here around the, the larger chedi that we just had a look at. And this particular one, although it's in the same architectural styles, made mostly with laterite, not with red brick, possibly constructed at a different time. And more reminiscent of the ones that we've seen in uh, Gumping Pet, as they're made with laterite in Gumping Pet. And here we can get a good view of a Sukhothai style Buddha image here, seated in the calling earth to witness position where the Buddha is touching the ground. I want you guys to get a look at one particular architectural style which is uh, unique to Sukhothai. You can see, see the focus there. The fingers are gracefully bent forward at the end. Okay. We'll get closer and have a better look at that in a moment. Alright, so let's keep walking around on Mahathat here. Again, most of these structures have been constructed with laterite and red brick. We don't see any sandstone uh, as it was not typical of the materials used by the Thai people of the Sukhothai era. So I just want to get a closer look at that, uh, that statue there. There's someone paying respect, so maybe we should wait. Okay. 
come back and visit the main image over here. to uh, take a look at a Buddha image that's been photographed so many times and you can find it on many postcards and websites. It's, it's quite a famous image here. Uh, in the typical Sukho Thai style, which is so beautiful yet simplistic. Let's go here and take a look. see on this image that the shoulders are quite large again as was typical of the uh, Sukhothai style Buddhas they may normally had large uh, shoulders and supernatural features uh, you'll see that the fingertips are curled forward a little bit okay, you can see the graceful lines there we go let me just get a closer look there, there you forward sloping fingertips. And the eyes gazing down. See the intricately crafted hair curls there. The lips have a slight smile. The pointed nose. And the downward gaze of the Buddha. Now, you'll see the flame finial. Again, it's quite beautifully crafted. Get around the front and take a, a good look at the flame finial here. The long earlobes, which Represent the um, the jewelry and the heavy earrings that the historical Buddha would have worn when he was still a prince before entering the, uh, or rather before becoming an ascetic. show you a different style of Chedi, which was not influenced, or at least we don't think um, has any outside influences, uh, like the Sri Lankan style Sukhothai Chedis, that is the bell-shaped Chedis, which Sri Lankan influence. This particular Chedi is something entirely Thai, okay? Um, it's one of the reasons we know that this particular temple was constructed after the King of Rankum Hang uh, during or, or after the reign of Li Tai because that's when uh, this architectural style was invented. Okay, so here we go. Let's just walk around here. There, as we look up at this chedi, you can see that the top of it shaped like a lotus bud. It's a very beautiful chedi uh, with a square base and then as we get toward the top it gets skinnier and skinnier and at the very top we can see the lotus bud shaped finial up there or rather the finial is on top of the lotus bud so that is uh, an architectural style that was not influenced by any other culture, but is something entirely Thai. 
See? And the main chitty is surrounded by smaller chitties, um, which I believe were influenced by a uh, uh, Varavadi or Hari Punjai style. You can see the square multi layers um, of these smaller chitties here, constructed of, well, this one's red brick, and the one in the center is constructed of laterite. And you can see the base base of this chitty has a lot of walking uh, either walking Buddhas or walking disciples of the Buddha here made from stucco the uh, typical Sukhothai style Buddha image on top calling the earth to witness All right. now as we turn around we see a standing Buddha image in the Sukhothai style the typical Sukhothai style so, As you'll notice uh, the fingers. Uh, again are pointed outwards. You got the typical downward gaze, a slight smile on the face, the pointed nose, uh, the intricately crafted hair curls, the flame finial, um, the arched eyebrows, all typical of the Sukhothai style, large shoulders, and the graceful uh, graceful curves and lines of the arms and limbs. Oops. On the other side here. Let's get a bit closer here. Again, you can see how the fingers are uh, pointed outwards there at the tips. You can see how the Buddha is almost gazing down at us there with a slight smile on his face. Look how the arms are gracefully curved right there and the large shoulders. Um, some authors write that these Buddha images had a superhuman features. That is, um, the shoulders would have been extra wide with sort of a big muscular chest, um, which is derived from a description of the Buddha in uh, some Buddhist poetry from the past. And here we have another example, beautiful example, simple yet beautiful example of that Thai style chedi from the Li Thai era of Sukho Thai. So square base, Let me get up close to it here on the other side so that we can um, have the sun shining on it as it sets. All right, so here's your typical lotus bud chedi square base, tapered off at the top until it reaches that lotus bud at the very top with a pointed finial. Very beautiful, surrounded by smaller square shaped chedi. Alright. Here's a view of the temple from the back. Again, Wat Mahat Hat. One of the more important temples in Sukhothai. Now, oh, I do want to show you this as well. This is a very typical, actually, of the Haripunchai, or late Varavati period, uh, especially, um, or I should say that uh, they would have taken the influence from uh, from Lanna, uh, which had, by the time this temple was built, taken over the kingdom of Haripunchai, which was part of the uh, Varavati culture. So this chedi here, 
is in the Hari Punchai style, although built during the Sukhothai period. So you can see how these different cultures had influence on uh, each other, or rather the older cultures had influence on the ones that came after. So again, the Mon Hari Punchai style jedi here was built in the Sukhothai period at one of the most important temples uh, in the Sukhothai kingdom. Uh, you can see each of these uh, small crevices would have held, likely have held a, a Buddha image. Okay, and now as we walk around uh, to this jetty, which has largely been ruined, you can see a typical feature um, of the Sukhothai style jetties here, with the elephants, the mythical creatures, scenes from uh, Buddhist literature. in stucco surrounding the bottom of the chedi. And again, here we have a typical Tsukutai style image. You can notice flame finial, hair curls, eyes gazing down, arched eyebrows, pointy nose, slight smile on the face. Okay. Um, the robe extends to the navel with the I believe they call it the, um, well, they name it after some type of insect, the way the, uh, the robe there um, kind of branches off into two pieces around the navel. Uh, exact description that's usually used escapes me right now. But again, you can tell uh, this Buddha, again, has those supernatural features with the um, wide shoulders, graceful curls. Look at those fingers um, pointing outward. and in the typical posture, calling the earth the witness. All right, and that is it for this virtual video tour. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening.